In this video, I'm gonna demonstrate how you can improve the performance of your load functions in Svelkit. So this is what your typical load function might look like. You may be waiting for multiple different promises to resolve, you're fetching data from various sources, and everything seems normal, but is there a better way that we can do this? Well, I'll tell you with this example right now, there absolutely is. So first things first, what I wanna do is I wanna actually demonstrate that this is in fact more performant. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna measure the amount of time that it takes our page to load. And we can do that on the server side by simply going into our hooks here. And if you recall, if you're familiar with the handle hook, this is what's responsible for generating the response back to the client. So what we can do is we can set up a console.time and we'll say handle, and then we'll do a console.time end. And this will just console log how long this takes to run. So let's go ahead and save and it should run. And we can see that it took 3.017 seconds, right? And that makes sense because we have one second, one second, one second, three seconds total. And if we wanted to break this down a bit further, we could say starting A, and we could do that. So we can see that we're starting A, starting B, starting C, and then our load function is done and the page is available to our user. So here's the page that I'm on at the moment. So if I refresh this page, you're gonna see that it's gonna be spinning there for quite some time. Right now, obviously this is a bit dramatic and I hope that your requests aren't taking a second or more to complete, but this is just an example and a way to visualize this. So a better way to do this is with promise unwrapping. And if we look at the Svelkit documentation, it says that top level promises will be awaited, which makes it easy to return multiple promises without creating a waterfall. And again, the emphasis on top level promises. So if we look here, this is the object that we're returning from our load function. Promise.resolve is what I'm gonna demonstrate here in just a second, but you can see that they have this C property here with a value and a promise here. When it gets to that page, that promise is not resolved yet. It's still in the form of a promise. However, A and B are. So that's something important to think about when you're setting up your return data structure. So let's go back into our application and let's refactor this a bit. So instead of doing this here, I'm gonna actually turn this into a function, an asynchronous function, and I'm gonna return await set timeout. And then I'll just move console log starting A here. And then I'm gonna do the same thing for the rest of these. And when I save this page, you're gonna see that we're getting some errors now in our console. It says data return from load while rendering is not serializable. So what we have to do is we actually have to return this as a promise. And we can accomplish that by just calling these different functions here. So we look here, this returns a promise. So now when we do that, and we save the page, if I scroll down, we can see that the handle took 1.017 seconds. So even though we still have three different one second timers here, it only takes one second. And if I bump one of these up to two seconds, we can see that it takes two seconds. So the weakest link is how long it should really take is gonna impact your performance the most. But we can see that even though this one takes two seconds, all of them start at the same time. So as soon as I save this page, it's gonna reload my um, auto refresh browser page here, which is gonna call this load function. So if I save this again, you're gonna see starting A, starting B, and starting C start at the exact same time. And I can also demonstrate that by just throwing a date.now in here. We can see that we had starting A, starting B, and starting C almost all at the same time, right? Of course, this is like a one trillionth of a second off or whatever this number is, but you can see that they all start at about the same time and it only takes until the weakest link for the page to resolve all the way. And the same thing would apply for a layout as well. So if we just move this down for a second, I'm gonna copy all of this and I'm going to create a plus layout.server.ts. I need to change this to a layout server load. And we'll need to change these as well. So we'll just make this D, E, and F. Okay, so I just saved that and we can see here in our console, because the page reloaded and this is the layout, all of these have the exact same start time, right? And even though there's six functions or six 
promise is being resolved, the maximum time it's gonna take is whatever the slowest one is. So if this one is 3,000 sec or 3,000 milliseconds, they all start at the exact same time, but the page isn't finished rendering until the slowest one is done. Now, obviously this is an ideal situation and let's just say that you needed something from D before you could even start E's request. Well, even still, you should wrap this in a function. So instead of you know doing this here, we could just say, let's just move D down here. We'll just say, await oh, set timeout for D here. And then we can get rid of D. And then we need to obviously remove this from our return statement. And when I save it now, let me refresh the page. We'll see that we had D, F, A, B, C. And then we had E, of course, because it was waiting within the same function. So this was blocking this from running. And the total time was four seconds because this one single call here took a total of four seconds. If this was bumped down to one, then the total time would be two seconds. Now the same concept applies to the plus page.ts as well. So if I just comment all of this out, and then I'm also gonna comment this out as well, and then I'm going to remove the timer on my hook here, because we're gonna visualize this another way, what we can do is we can just say await, fetch, and then I'm just gonna get going to hit a dummy endpoint here. And then if I open up my browser's network tab, let me zoom in a bit so you can see this. When I hover over a child page is where that page.ts is, it's going to go ahead and prefetch the data required for that page. So when I hover over it here, you're going to see that I made two fetch requests, right? And they were done in a waterfall fashion. Right, so they weren't made at the same time. You can see that this one had to wait for this one to finish. So the total time was these two summed together. So if I go here, go back again, clear this out and then hover, you're gonna see it a little bit more distinctively there. It took 90 milliseconds to render the page, each request taking about 40 some milliseconds. And then if we come back to our load function here and we do the same thing, except we wrap these in a function, and then I come into my browser again. When I hover over a child page, you're gonna see that now they're both running at the exact same time. So the total time to render the page wasn't the sum of these two requests, it was the greater of these two requests, whatever one took the longest. So that's gonna conclude this video on improving the performance of your load functions in Svelte Kit. If you got value out of this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. It greatly helps the channel out a lot. And I will see you all in the next video.